Hi, and welcome to video four. Uh, this is the fourth of five videos for section 1.4. And in this video, we're specifically just going to be looking at what's known as the greatest integer function. So probably a new concept to most of you, unless maybe you had like some higher level math in high school, uh, or maybe if you're retaking, you've, you've heard it before. But it's, it's the following. It's got some sort of funky notation. It's our value x with like two brackets on the left and two brackets on the right. And this is our notation for the greatest integer function. And this guy, what it means is that this is the largest integer less than or equal to x. So if x is an integer, it's just that value. If x is a decimal, or maybe like pi, 3.14, so if it's some sort of pi e, some value that represents a number, it's the largest integer less than or equal to. So the easiest way to figure this out, if you have to know this value, draw a number line, put x on the number line, and the first integer to the left of that point is the greatest integer. So for example, if I have the greatest integer of 1.4, this is equal to what? Well, again, if I draw a number line, 1.4 is about here, so I go to the left, the largest integer less than or equal to that, and the integer right to the left of it is equal to 1. The second one, greatest integer of pi. Well, again, on a number line, pi is what? 3.14, blah, 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 blah. So somewhere here. So I go to the left to the first integer I hit, which is going to be 3. What if I have the greatest integer of negative 2.2? This is why I suggest using a number line. Because these are pretty easy. 1.4 goes back to 1. 7.2 goes back to 7. But if I draw the number line here for this one, so negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2.2 is what? It's about here, and I have to go to the left. And the first integer I hit to the left is negative 3. <clears throat> so just be careful with that. We're using this greater in greatest integer function. Once you start getting into the negatives, it's not just the default of the number in the front. And so by theorem 2, which is the one we looked at in the last video, that the limit from the left, limit from the right has to be the same. So by this theorem, the greatest integer function, the limit as x approaches a of this greatest integer function does not exist. And if you were to draw what this guy looked like, it's a piecewise function that goes on forever left and right. So if I'm between 0 and 1, this is coming back to 0. From 1 up to 2, comes back to here. And this thing just keeps stepping the whole way. And so if I'm going to 0, well, from the right side, it's going to keep coming back to 0. Once I'm in the negatives, it goes over to negative 1. And so, again, because it's not the same whether I'm coming from the left or from the right, the limit does not exist. Let me give you another theorem. I'll call this one theorem 3. So for now, or for future reference, that's this guy here.
So I use THM shorthand for theorem. Again, math people are lazy, so we don't actually want to write the whole word. But it has the following. If f of x is less than or equal to g of x when x is near a, except possibly at a, Again, because with these limits, we're not actually concerned with the value right at that value. So except possibly at A. And the limits of F and G both exist. approaches A, then the limit of f of x as x approaches A is less than or equal to the limit of g of x as x approaches A. A lot of words, what is this talking about? So I have two functions. And if the function evaluated, if the a number evaluated at one function is always less than the other function, then as I approach some value A, their limits are also going to have that same relationship. The limit as x approaches A of f of x is going to be less than the limit of as x approaches A of g of x. So that's it. Real quick video there for video number four. Um, I want to stop this one here because video five, we're going to talk about squeeze theorem, which is a very important theorem in terms of uh, finding limits. Uh, so come on back. We'll do that one. And then that'll be the end of the videos for section 1.4.